How's it going everyone? Michael here at 3D Print Everything and today I have a much requested video. Y'all want my profile for the KP3S Pro. So that is what I'm going to give you today. Please listen to me right now. You might need to make changes to this profile. You might need to make changes to your printer. Um, I am not guaranteeing uh, this profile as anything. Um, there will be at least two of them, but I, I just want to get over that if you're going to use these profiles, watch the whole video as I'm going to go over instructions on how to understand these profiles, what you might need to change, and how it's going to be extremely useful for you. So uh, to start off in the description, you've probably already seen, I will have a link. Um, what I'll probably do is make it a Google Drive link that will have both profiles in there, and I might update them um, over time, especially if you're requesting updates through comments. I can uh, update them further. But first off, this is a KP3S Pro. If you don't know or you're about to get one, um, if you go to add a printer, you're going to go down to non-network printer, you're going to go to King Rune, and you're going to choose the KP3S, then name it whatever you want, go to add, and you'll change the print bed size to 200, or as someone else was advising me, potentially 210, 210, 200. Um, so once you have the profile set up, up here you can change your nozzle size. Now I do print with a 0.6 nozzle. The KP3S Pro is big enough that if you're doing a lot of medium to big sized things, the uh, 0.6 nozzle is gonna be beneficial. If it is not, then you wanna load this profile and make sure you switch back to the 0.4 nozzle or at least make sure that your line width is set at 0.4 or uh, the calculation of what it should be. See, its calculation says it should be 6.6. If I go down here to the 0.4 nozzle um, and I make changes, yeah, see, it puts it at 4.4. So um, choose your nozzle size. I prefer the 0.6. Uh, let's just look at the time. If I change nothing else, 0.6 takes an hour 30. If we do the 0.4, um, what does it do? Two hours. So the 0.6 nozzle is shaving 30 minutes on this print. That can be a big deal dependent on what uh, what you're printing. So um, the other thing is layer height. You're gonna need to choose your layer height. Okay, certain prints want a tighter layer height. For this print in particular, I'm doing a 0.12 layer height because I want, I want that thread to come out really nice. Um, for a lot of my other prints, I'm doing 0.25 or I'm doing 0.3. Um, so be aware of your layer height and what you have it set at. Um, wall line count, average is set at two, optimized wall, you can turn on alternate extra wall or not. Um, I have that one turned off for this one. This, the, this one, PLA slight speed increase, I just did a 20% gyroid. You could also do lightning, but lightning's not going to necessarily work for every single print. So you need to be careful with your infill choice on this profile as well. You can also turn on connect to infill lines or turn them off. Um, as a reminder, I'll show you what those do real quick. We're gonna go into extensions, parts for calibration. This is under marketplace. If you haven't downloaded parts for calibration, it's under marketplace. Um, let's bring in a calibration cube. Now, I'll show you just real fast. This is our print. And as we go down, we see the infill lines up with the wall and it just touches the wall there. So it touches the wall. Uh, if you do connect infill lines, this is designed so that when that touches the wall, you don't really see it on the outside. So if you're seeing your infill on the outside, um, connect infill lines will add these nice long straight lines and will make it uh, a little smoother. And then if you want to make the print even stronger, you can alternate add extra wall. And add extra wall with combine infill lines does this cool thing where it stitches the infill in and out of the walls. So I personally prefer this one as a stronger print. So those are optional um, things that you can do to make it go a little bit faster. I didn't even check the time. Let me look at that time real quick. What was that time? 16 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention because we did the other part. Um, I'm going to leave that other part pulled up here. Okay. Um, so those are options. Z-seam alignment. Z-seam alignment is one, again, that you can kind of tune, and my profile isn't going to give you, like, the best option. I chose shortest. That means it's going to print the fastest or whatever. 
Let's just randomly choose back and see what happens. On this one, it's round and conical, or, or round shaped, so the same exact print time, and it put all of it down here. So you can change this, you can make it random intentionally. Um, yeah, added three minutes to make it random. So you can choose, these are essentially the zits, the divots, the little pits, these are the retraction points of the print. Um, so you want to, you want to optimize that for your print. Sometimes it'll be good to put it on an edge. Sometimes you can hide it. Sometimes it's better to just have the shortest. Um, so you be the decision maker there. But what I noticed here, so when I chose shortest, there's not a whole lot of movements on the inside, which means less stringing and stuff like this. So I believe I fixed this. Um, your part should not look like that as I've made changes to this. Top and bottom layers, four is about an average. The infill, about the same as we talked about. Um, printing tip for PLA 200, PETG 220, whatever. Build plate temperature 50 is good, flows fine. Um, 85 is an average medium to high speed. This can probably do 100 to 120. Feel free to turn this up and experiment with it at 100 to 120. You'll probably start seeing issues past 120. You'll probably start seeing issues past like 250. I might even turn this up to like 220 or something, but this is a pretty decent speed and everything. Retraction. You can turn on or off retraction at change and retract before outer walls. I find I've found these useful. Same with combing. Combing is one that you want to play with a little bit, but for my current settings, this is what I have set up. This could potentially be changed. Cooling only for PLA. Supports if needed. If you do have supports, I do do the tree and I do everywhere or touching build plate. But those are the two things I do there. Um, build plate adhesion, I like the brim and I like having a brim distance of like 0.25 or 0.15. That way the brim holds the part down, but it also gives you a little bit of a gap that it just pulls the part away real nice. Um, and if you don't have it, arc welder is kind of cool. If you put arc welder in here, arc welder is taking these big curved movements and making it one movement. It somehow made the time an hour or a minute faster. Um, you can find Arc Welder in Marketplace. It'll be in here. Um, but I turned that off for this setting. Adaptive layers is kind of neat too. Adaptive layers, the whole point is that when you have a straight line, it does thicker walls. When you do curved lines, it does thinner walls. We can see right here, thicker layers. Right here, thinner layers. That's interesting. It doesn't always work. I've had it fail prints, um, but I've also had it make prints look good. Um, use at your own risk as well. Um, but I just wanted to kind of go over that. Be aware, I've, writ, I've put in a PTG low string and a PLA slight speed increase. If you want anything else more specific, um, let me know. But these will be the two that I am... Uh, current changes, keep changes, discard changes, whatever. These will be the two that I'm using. So, so use these at risk. PTG low string is going to have a 0.12 layer height. That can go up to 0.335. Um, I'm just doing it for this specific print. This is what I just wanted to build it out on. So just be aware that if you're using these, you might need to modify them a little bit. This is a good base. This is printing production prints for me. It's, it's good and solid, but um, I want you to pay attention to just those things that I listed there. Those are the main things that I'm changing. Pretty much all those settings that I pointed out there are the important ones that make the difference in a stringy print, a failed print, a good print. Um, we don't have to worry about, you know, retraction, extra prime amount, minimum retraction travel, you know, overhang angles, all this other stuff. You can kind of, you know, go out the noise on a lot of that stuff, but you do want to uh, pay attention to those things that went over. So thanks guys. Enjoy the profiles. Comment down below. Let me know how they work. If they aren't working good, I will make changes to them and I will make them better. Um, so please, please, please give me feedback. I want this to be for the community and good for the community. Um, I've been running the KP3S Pros for many days now. I now have more of them, so this print is looking good. I'm using... Oh, what the heck was looking good? It peeled up. I'll have to put a brim on this or something, um, so I'll need to stop that. I was wondering why I saw these lines in it. It shouldn't have lines like that. That's because it peeled. Um, so, lame on that. Um, but look, I've got two more Pros here and another Pro there. I'll replace all my 3S's with Pros eventually. Um, and as you can see, my current settings, mm, beautiful. I don't see any stringing. I don't see any things over there. That looks exactly like what we want. So that should be what you're getting is that print super clean. 
with minimalistic strings. So, um, again, thanks, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Someone throw this in the King Rune Facebook group. Um, I'm not as active on there because when I am, I just start going down commenting on everyone else's stuff. And um, there's a lot of opinions to be had. I don't want to get a, you know, have my opinion create a, a negative uh, anything. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I also can be snarky, so I, I try not to, you know, post on the on the social medias too much. Um, like for instance, just the last time, and I'll tell this last story, and I'm getting off. Um, last time I remember having a negative response in the King Room page, the guy was crying about a print that looked beautiful. And he's like, I don't know how to make this any better. Blah, blah, blah. What's wrong with this printer? Or like, like why can't I? He was just complaining. He didn't ask for anything. He didn't even say, what's wrong with this printer? He, he was just, this print looks terrible. I'm so frustrated. Like, you know, wham. And I was like, I think my comment was, imagine being upset at a really nice looking print. And, you know, some people would give me crap about it. And, and fair enough, you know, I didn't add anything helpful. And someone was like, well, why don't you say anything helpful? And it's like, well, if the guy had asked for help i would have gladly given him suggestions but he's essentially complaining about a really nice print and um y you know i i would be happy if the majority of my prints came out as clean as the one he was taking a photo of so i was just kind of taken aback that he was unhappy with it um so that my point is is uh, i've got to represent the company more professionally when I am doing that and I'm actively trying to work on changing my knowledge through or changing my knowledge, changing my words through NLP and hypnosis to be a better business person, a better interactor with other people and salesperson and all that stuff. Anyways, thanks guys for letting me spiel for the next like two and a half minutes here. Um, I do that a lot, but, uh, yeah, thanks for staying to the end. Like, share, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Later.